Welcome back to the Monolith Film Podcast. I am Nick Gillen. I am Lee Byrne. This week, we are doing a fun one. Werner Herzog's 1976 Heart of Glass. Herz aus Glausen? Is that how you say it? It's just glass. Herz aus Glass? Yeah. Well, I extra translated it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your uh, first time watching this movie, Lee? It was my first time. And uh, first impression, should we give a little synopsis? There, because there's some funny things that other movies might not uh, might not follow suit. It's uh, it's a uh, 18th century Bavarian village kind of period piece story, but everyone is hypnotized in it. The cast, the not, cast, not necessarily the characters. Yeah. yeah. So the cast is learned their lines and performed while under Herzog's personal hypnosis. I don't know if that's a euphemism for, uh, I don't know what that means. Everyone except for uh, Hyas was... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, he was the only guy who wasn't hypnotized. Interesting. Well, he's the, the seer there, so he's supposed to know things. Yeah. You know? But everyone else was hypnotized except for him. Because yeah, he looks pretty hypnotized, too. He was a good actor. That yeah. <laughs> I think, out of all the people, like, Hyas seems hypnotized. The, the, the like, farm maiden... Not like the uh, the young uh, dummy girl, but like the old mother who like slaps her ass. Why are you naked in bed again? Yeah. Like she's the only person who doesn't seem hypnotized yeah, in the whole movie. I agree. Everyone else is moving in slow motion underwater. And, uh... Yeah. Anyways, what did you think of uh, first impressions of it? Um, right off the bat, I mean, uh, I didn't, I barely took any notes. Okay. This is the least amount of notes I've ever taken okay. <laughs> for a movie yeah. because I was like so drawn into yeah. the movie. I just like completely forgot to take notes. It's I I can't think of another movie like it. It's so no, strange. Yeah. It's very strange, extremely strange. And it um. Did this come out? This came out after Strocheck, right? I think it might be the year before. Actually. Oh really? I think wasn't it seventy seven when uh, Strocheck came out? Oh, I think you're right. E- either way, they're very close. They're yeah. right next to each other. Yeah. Because I found. Uh, it seems like Herzog put a l- like way more effort into composition. Mm-hmm. In like every thing. single yeah. frame looks like it, like a painting. Yeah, it's yeah. insane. Yeah. Well, he's like doing all those. Uh, what do you call them? Like the adventure paintings with the big mountains and all yeah. that shit. Yeah. yeah. Looks cool though. It does. It's I an like absolute, it's, cool. it's a fucking beautiful movie. Yeah. I like the blackness of the shadows. Is my favorite part. Yeah. Of it. How dark everything is. Like the harp player, where you just see like the strings yeah. almost in his fingers and face, and there's just black space. It is. I mean, them. the whole movie is like hypnotizing in, in its own way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Apart yeah. from the uh, the actual cast being hypnotized as well. Fun fact uh, about my relation to this movie: first year and a half of uh, Concordia, I wrote every single essay on this movie, and uh, no one knew what the fuck I was talking about. All A's, baby. <laughs> All A's. <laughs> no one's seen this fucking movie. Which surprises me, because it's like... It's good. It's really good. I like it a lot. Yeah. I like it tons. It's just so fun, it seems. It's like... Uh, well, I have, a, I have a quote here from the uh, my box set collection. This is a Roger Ebert quote. I think it should be approached like a piece of music in which to comprehend everything in terms of mood and aura... In which compre- in which we comprehend everything in terms of mood and aura, I guess. Paraphrase, not a direct yeah, quote. Okay. I guess. In which we comprehend everything in terms of mood and aura, and know how it makes us feel, even when we can't say what it makes us think. Four on four. He loved that movie. I think he's given every single one of her like movies four on four though. So. Yeah, I think you mentioned that a little last biased. Time as well. <laughs> but uh, good enough quote. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I, I get I get what he's saying. Definitely, yeah. that's definitely like that's goes into like why i wasn't taking notes as well you know mm-hmm. it's a hard movie to think yeah over while watching it mm-hmm. i mean it's a fun one to think over after watching it yeah but during it's more of an experience it really is um in uh in response to that ebert quote um i, th- I agree with him too i think mm-hmm. he's right on the, right on the ball with that uh, i said the time in the movie it uh, it works like um like refrains and songs or like parts of sections of songs like this would be a verse section okay and then yeah. we're into the chorus section interesting like we move through time like the movie's non-linear the story of it is it because we go from like the bar one scene in the bar where those two guys are just like looking at each other talking that's my favorite scene too that's so hilarious it's like <laughs> these two guys who are talking so fucking slow but it's supposed to be like a dramatic angry scene yeah you know? but they're talking like 
this and it's fucking like three minutes long the scene and at the end he smashes him on the head with a like a beer glass and uh, oh, that's fantastic all in like the guys are moving fucking so slow but um yeah it'll be that scene then it'll go to like the girl waking up in the barn or something and then a few scenes happen Hyas walks around does whatever the fuck off. i wonder how Hyas makes money do you think people pay him to see the future I don't I was know. thinking that in the movie, like he's buying the flour at one part. So where's this guy getting money for flour? Anyways, that's the tangent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then we go back to the bar, and then there's the smashing of the bottle on the head. And there's a few times where, like, when the two guys die, like when they both fall on top of each other, yeah. the girl walks in, ah, starts screaming, and then a bunch of other stuff happens. The guy, they're ripping open the girl's or the um, the wife's, uh, not the wife, the. Uh, Widows, uh, Davenport. Davenport. Yeah, <laughs> ripping up her couch, <laughs> and uh, like all that stuff happens. There's stuff with the maid, uh, the server, the servant girl. I forget her name, Ludmila. Something like that. I yeah, think it's Ludmila. And uh, then we go back, and then it's the two people, or it's the two farm hands talking about who died first. Like, oh, his hand was on top of that, and his is on top of that. Right. But like in real time, that would have been like the day before, or like the morning of. Okay. And we're almost in the afternoon now. So we were kind of moving between to try okay. and get this rhythm through it. I had I had interpreted all that as like mm. uh like, like let's say they show the the uh farm girl finding the uh finding the corpses or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then everything that happens after that mm. is more like happening simultaneously. Yeah. Like not necessarily going back and forth. Yeah, I mean, just everything all at that's once. That's just my way of looking at it there because I'm yeah. sure there's a million ways you could see anything in in this movie at least. Right. You know, anything could uh, could make the because it's like poetry almost pretty well yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean even like the like I could have watched it without subtitles. <laughs> yeah. I mean well, some it's of more the more dialogue... fun with the subtitles, yeah, definitely, I yeah. think. I like the dialogue in this the, one. Well that's too. it. Like even the dialogue is like poetry. Yeah, yeah. Like none of it makes any literal sense. No. Well, I'd, uh, the first time I saw it, and it starts off, I'm like, what the fuck's this going? Like a five-minute sequence of, like, eight-millimeter shit, like, film and fucking, like, rivers or something? Oh, what the fuck is this movie? And then it cuts to some idiot fucking standing there all buzzed out with yeah. his eyes closed. There's giants coming to eat our, rip us apart and eat us. <laughs> like, what kind of stupid fucking movie is this? And then uh, I fell in love with it, scene two. <laughs> the I second think, scene I liked. Honestly, I had, like, the exact same experience. Yeah. This is one of the only movies that we've done for the podcast that I've mm. watched in two sittings. Okay. And the first sitting was like the first scene mm. or two. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck did yeah, they get like me the into? Beginning. Yeah. But, and then the second sitting, I was like, all right, I'm in. It's sick, dude. I yeah. like it. I like it a lot. And so like uh, literally all my notes are from the, those first two scenes. Okay. pretty much. <laughs> we got the return of uh, one of our favorite characters too. We saw him in story Trek, yeah. the old man, old man. He's I a, like him in this one too. Me too. Yeah. He's pretty he's cool good. in this one. He's uh, Adelbert, something like that. Yes, yeah, something like He's that. Like the accountant. Uh, fuck, I don't know what he is. <laughs> the He's master still just a doesn't want old man. breakfast now, you stupid servant. Get <laughs> out of here. Fantastic line. This guy's got the best lines in it too. He's the, he's another he's just another stupid old man, but Pretty he's well. not the stupid old no, man. No, that's true. There's another one. There is a laughing old man. Yeah, he just laughs. Yeah, that's all he, he complains about his back, complains mm-hmm. about his shoes, and then he laughs. Yeah, but I mean kind of understand it i could sit in a chair oh, for yeah. 12 fucking years no problem <laughs> I'm um, about right. i can feel my spine turning to dust in my body <laughs> it's like dad get up 12 yeah. years i've shown you these shoes <laughs> i think it's like every time i watch one of the herzog movies i'm like oh yeah this is my favorite i remember why this one was my favorite okay yeah. watch another one and be like fuck this one <laughs> this one's awesome dude i love this one it's so goofy it's uh it's tremendous it really feels like I guess it's kind of in the same vein as uh, Fellini's oh, Terracon. Oh, definitely. Pretty well. Yeah, Period for sure. and like all composed. Stuff. Yeah. Feels the same. Yeah, it does. I think I, with the, the other two, I prefer this one. I prefer this one as well. Yeah. Like the Fellini Satyricon had a... Mm. Feels more European or more like Italian more. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's more, more like, vibrant. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, exactly. Hey, we're fun. This it's is, a lot more flashy. Yeah. This is more foggy. Yeah. This yeah. one this one has like a set palette that it kind of yeah. sticks to throughout. <laughs> yeah. It only breaks that palette a few times. When's that? There's like maybe two scenes okay. where there's any blue at all. Oh yeah. There's okay. like the one where the the dude does mm-hmm. he's like standing over some body or something. I took oh, a I screenshot. I don't remember that shot. I, I was thinking you. when the 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 sun is going with the uh, 
the torch that's another palette uh, that also changes that's the only uh, yeah different lens choice too, yeah really or like a super shallow lens they only use in that one. Oh yeah and the the guy's uh yeah when the guy dies yeah it's at the uh the funeral of the the man who falls down first oh is that what that was yeah okay yeah uh, yeah that's a cool ass scene too it is that. yeah and it's like the only time mm-hmm. or one of the only times there's ever blue in the entire movie yeah. or i mean it looks blue to me tremendous movie though i quite like this one a lot yeah um we haven't given uh, a little summary yeah um basically there's hyas mm-hmm. who is the seer it's he like can a, see the future yeah yeah kind of like an oracle figure yeah. soothsayer is that what they call him i don't know i don't know either they call him hyas his name's Hyas. <laughs> I think his middle name is Suf. <laughs> and uh, the the villagers seek him out because of some giants or some shit. Yeah. That part, I don't know. That gets a ab- that plot. There I are think, no giants. Yeah, it no. gets abandoned yeah. pretty quickly. Oh, I think that was just kind of to introduce him yeah. as like the only person who has any sense in the town. The the real dilemma in this town mm. is that the only person who knows how to make ruby glass died without telling anyone else how to make ruby glass mulheim the glass yeah. master yeah and that's I, I think that's how the city has any wealth yeah, yeah. That's like the only thing they're good at yeah and now the fucker's dead and he didn't mm. tell anyone so and they're just trying to figure out how to make ruby glass yeah pretty nice the glass too it is really nice yeah nice. all the glass blowing scenes yeah. are fucking cool, cool too yeah i bet those guys weren't hypnotized though i think those were professional glass blowers. oh yeah 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 most likely. because they're fucking doing all the stuff all proper stuff no yeah way so the dude fucking so makes the horse dude, yeah. there's that's no way cool there's dude. no way that dude is hypnotized. that's a cool horse <laughs> yeah this guy fucking blows a glass horse in like 25 seconds or he pulls it out of blown glass Tremendous. yeah that's a cool shot yeah the glass scenes are cool yeah but that's pretty much the entire movie. Yeah, well, the whole town kind of degenerates into madness, and they yeah. they kind of terrorize the widow. Uh, we talked about ripping up her Davenport to look if he had secret notes. That's a good scene, too. He's like, can we decipher this? He's holding yeah. a K. <laughs> <laughs> like, they just that go nuts. The whole funny. town just goes nuts. And, uh, oh, as we said before, the uh, everyone is hypnotized, too, so they, they already seem nuts yeah. as it starts. Yeah, they seem really, like, kind of dopey but yeah like, well some guys are buzzed out it seems yeah like they're fucking uh yeah red some of them are twitching and yeah, shit. it's yeah, fucking weird yeah yeah very strange but uh then uh yeah the whole town they go so mad that they uh they throw all their glass into the lake and then no one has any glass and then highest fucks off and that's the end of the story yeah pretty much book ended by allegory the uh yeah the mountain scenes yeah. there um yeah, I talked to my aunt about this because she collects uh, glass. Like, okay, she has a cool. big glass collection. And she said it was actually like that back in the day where, like, each town kind of thing would have their own recipe for some kind of glass. Okay. And, like, no one would know it. Only one dude would know it or, like, the guy's family. And no one would t- tell anyone or do anything because that's what... Because if anyone could blow, like, oh, they can blow right. sapphire glass or something, then it's, like, the market's flooded with it. So this one town would do this. This other town would do that. So I guess it's somewhat historical. That's cool. Well, also... A complete dream pretty well right too. yeah 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 but at least because there's like this whole like the the like noble of the town mm-hmm. i don't know what to call him he does, doesn't really He's have a title like, well he seems like he'd be like the landlord or something yeah like the guy who owns the play like yeah the master of the town whatever oh like, yeah they call him the master something all the time. like that yeah, yeah. but if he... that might just because he has a big house though yeah he's that's his he's like know. the only guy who doesn't work in the fucking yeah blowing factory that's probably it then yeah he probably owns the blowing factory yeah there you yeah. go he owns the, yeah. he owns the blowing factory yeah um he keeps talking about like blood yeah. as the secret ingredient for ruby glass it's yeah. so fucking funny because like obviously not dude come on but <laughs> well, he's obsessed the guy with laughing it. the whole movie <laughs> <Yeah>. too <laughs> the fucking guy man, he doesn't want to stand up until the end he stands yeah. up he's fine just because he wants to see yeah. the fire but then fucking uh <laughs> they're carrying him in his fucking like lazy boy chair down the streets and it's everything. definitely a wheelchair is it really yeah, some fucking medieval thing. wheelchair oh, yeah? or something. I gotta rewatch it. I missed the fucking things. But Maybe that's a it cool is just a sofa too. then. That is cool when they're walking, when there's that train of people walking yeah. to the factory. And uh, there's some guys, like, their arms are up and their eyes are closed, yeah. just looking nuts. The, uh, the fucking, the shaved head chick who walks around with a goose yeah. later on. Yeah. She's fucking weird. That is strange. Yeah. She's a weird character, that one. Her hands are always like... Like a kind of like a T Rex. I don't even know if she's hypnotized or she's just like strange. She (laughs) seems like a lunatic, like an actual mental patient. Yeah, she does. 
Um, one fun fact I have is that Herzog wanted her to hold a goose because it's the stupidest animal in his opinion. Okay, cool. He says he grew up with a lot of geese, and he said their eyes are dead, blank, and stupid. <laughs> he said there's nothing dumber than a goose. So that's why he made her carry a goose. Didn't he say that about chickens last week? I was mistaken. Okay, it's, goose. it's okay. I re-looked it up. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I re-looked it. Sorry, Strojek. Um, yeah, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um... What's another fun fact? Oh, he was shot uh, right next to his hometown where he grew up. Cool. So all that stuff was like walking distance for him. Shit. Except the mountains are in Ireland. Okay. Those are Irish mountains. What or about the, the islands and all that stuff? Yeah. There's one hmm. shot where uh, Hyas is sitting on top of a cliff above the city and he's staring below yeah. the city. Yeah. Is that fake? I think it's fake. Okay. Yeah. Because it I looks a little it... wonky. Yeah. But like not... Like it doesn't look like green screen. It can screen. fool you though. Yeah, it can fool you. I bet what it was. I think was you take like a picture and just blow it up. To, yeah, like, whatever ten feet or something, and you you just shoot up. Yeah, it's like the shot we're talking about is like uh, highest sitting on the edge of a cliff, and in the far distance you see the whole layout of the town, but there's no movement also in the background. Right. There's zero movement in the town itself. And I don't know. Yeah, I think it is fake though. Yeah. I would say it's a uh, a fake one. But it still looked. Uh, it was still a really cool shot. Works out. Yeah. I mean, I think we're looking for stuff, too, to, like, point out and say, oh, this is a fun thing that's true. Fun. But I, I don't think the casual, I don't know if there's a casual viewer for this movie. Probably not. But uh, <laughs> if you're a bit of a freak, uh, you might miss it. Uh, what's another fun fact here? Oh, yes, he was explicitly copying the style of the German landscape painter Caspar David Friedrich. Interesting. Was who he, he cites as his inspiration for the compositions. Okay. I, uh, I looked up his paintings, and it pretty well looks like the stuff we saw. Yeah? It's like, well, he only did, or from what I saw, he only did big landscapes, always mountains, and just portraits. Okay. But the portraits were always kind of what we see with, like, black backgrounds yeah. and like, super harsh lighting, like, high-key, one light, one, like, light source, one side of your face lit, super, super sharp. And uh, the landscapes were always like these jagged cliffs and tons of fog. Okay, cool. So we pretty much see that throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, very much so. But I mean, other than that, I don't even think he needed to say that he was citing someone. Like, you can tell it's yeah, all the... Like, it's probably not only him. There's probably 20 other painters you could think of. Yeah, it definitely... The whole mm. thing feels like a big German painting. Yeah. But this Casper uh, David Friedrich... Uh, Oh, yeah, here's another uh, thing about... Uh, oh, it's Adelbert was the guy's Adelbert. name. The okay. old man is Adelbert. He is uh, a circus performer in the uh, Enigma of Casper Hauser. Okay. I just uh, remembered that, so that's that's a fun... Uh, well, not just remembered. Yesterday, I, uh, I looked it up. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so he's a, he's a Herzog regular. I think just those three, but those are three, like, his three big, uh, three right. big ones of his. He doesn't have that many, like, feature... Or fiction features that are popular, really. Yeah, I mean, Fitzcarraldo is the only one I've ever yeah. really heard of before yeah. talking to you about him, mm -hmm. I pretty think much. He, he probably has six that are of acclaim or that people know about, really. Okay. Like, uh, Fitzcarraldo, for sure, is the yeah. most popular. And then, like, it's a big step to number two, you know, for right. popularity. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're all good, and his bad ones are really bad. Uh, we're going to talk about... Uh, the more uh, metaphoric uh, stuff in the movie now, the more uh, less. Well, I guess it's pretty well in your face too. All the, well, the bookend pretty well. Yeah. Um, for those of you who have not seen the movie, it starts and ends with a, uh, a sequence uh, completely out of uh, tune with the other movie or with the rest of the movie, where it's a lot of. Um, well, the opening is like eight millimeter. I don't even know if it's eight millimeter or it's just shot and then with a like a shit like birch sack or something on top of it. You know, it looks <laughs> just strange. It doesn't look like bad film, but um, like poor film stock shots of waterfalls and things. And Hyas is telling you the story about a, a group of people who live on a deserted island at the edge of the known world that think that the world is flat. Is that the end? Yeah. Yeah. And then the very end, the people uh, of the island or of this mountain island are looking out and they decide to send an expedition to the end of the world or to the edge of the earth. And they want to see if you fall off the end. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the quote from the, uh, the box set says that the book ending is both 
the most hopeful and the most hopeless. Right, even the quote at the end says like uh, they interpreted the birds flying out to sea as them as hopeful, mm -hmm. or like even though it would seem as though the birds was a sign of hope. Yeah. And then the sentence never ends. Oh, yeah. Like there's no but. I don't remember that. Yeah. That's. Uh, I really like this movie. This is fun. This movie. Yeah, I, I like it. it too. Um. So yeah. Uh, what do you think about that? Just, just from that alone. I don't know what to think, really. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, it's yeah. like the entire movie is like, yeah. like it's super fun to watch and it's mm -hmm. super pretty and it's yeah. like obviously there's something there. But, but yeah, I, I have my own kind of reading of it. Yeah. That goes with the kind of new German cinema. Thing, okay. Yeah. And that's kind of the obvious stuff. Right. Like the fortune stuff is pretty well it only. But I don't know how my fortune stuff ties in with the hopelessness hopefulness situation yeah that that the whole ending mm -hmm. with like the fucking random people on this random yeah. island who are but, separated from society who seek out the new world like fuck is that beautiful though yeah it is That's holy awesome, shit yeah dude. i really like that the way it's composed looks so strange yeah. it's like you're looking at this, this like cliff face and there's like guys playing weird mandolins and stuff and like women in black cloaks and things and all kinds of weird medieval looking people everywhere it's awesome it is really cool it it's like awesome. it's like that whole sequence is filmed like sci-fi is filmed today okay but like this is like way before anyone yeah. did anything yeah like crazy sci-fi like if you watch fucking uh i don't know which star wars it is like last jedi i think oh yeah it kind that of whole sequence like, with Luke yeah. on that island is like almost, fucking eh? shot for shot yeah. the same thing. Yeah, you spin around the top yeah. of the cliff and the guy's one guy's standing there. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it pretty well is. And like that that cliff shot, yeah. any cliff shot in a sci-fi will mm -hmm. do that yeah. thing. Well, it's funny. Out of the two movies we just talked about, one is good. <laughs> <laughs> one is... <laughs> I mean, you, you decide which one uh, we prefer. Um, so yeah, my, uh, my reading of it... Yeah. Is uh, is I forget where it says here, but one guy it's a it's a quote I'm pulling from the movie. A uh, guy says uh, the ruby glass is oh it's I think Hyas is telling a future is telling a fortune. Okay, and he says something like, uh, the ruby glass is our land, something like that. That's kind of the paraphrase of what he's saying, and I was thinking like. Um, what we talked about with new German cinema and like uh, what Herzog wants to do uh, with World War Two, where yeah. he kind of wants to step over the history completely and continue film history as if uh, World War Two never happened, or to kind of address it very negatively, but like not politically or socially, but like right. nationally, like yeah, like for the German people itself, like like cinema paused. Yeah. Right before World War Two, and you press play after World exactly. War Two, yeah. and everything in between is like that mm -hmm. was shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I guess he's trying to tell people, hey, you don't want to do stuff like that anymore. Yeah, like I, I'm pretty sure he grew up in that kind of post-war time when you're fucking. What was it in the uh, little Dieter needs to fly where they're eating the walls and stuff? Yeah, like boiling the, wallpaper yeah, and shit. Boiling drywall yeah. to fucking eat it, or to eat the glue off wallpaper. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That doesn't sound too fun. Um. So yeah, what's this is, uh, I wrote here, ruby glass is their land, the loss thereof results in madness. So uh, something like the German uh, homeland or like that kind of, uh, what's the, I think there's a word for it, like uh, Mutterland, Mutterland, Ma something yeah. like that. And uh, I don't know, like the kind of Nazi idea taking it away or taking it out of this like German tradition. Because we're kind of seeing what German art history has been like. Yeah. In the composition and the painting and or the references to the painting at least. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of seeing what the German art was. And then it kind of switches in the 30s. And then kind of everyone, no one thinks of pre-World War II when you think of like German stuff. You go, oh, isn't that a bunch of Nazi stuff? Too? Right. Like that's your first thing to go to. Yeah. So I think he's trying to, he's upset that the, the fascism kind of took away all this history or took away all this art from germany and just made it this one thing instead okay so he's trying to something like that yeah kind of makes sense yeah that's that's how i understood it at least 
So like the the death of the ruby glass maker mm -hmm. is the event. Yeah. And so the event in history would be World War Two. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily saying that the death of the of the maker was the death of the Nazi regime. Mm, no. Which is that event as well. Yeah. Or that would be like the start of it. Yeah. Yeah. So then and then or actually I guess that would be the kinda well yeah, start of the regime when everyone kinda starts going nuts, you right. know. And so removing the ruby glass mm -hmm. from Germany. Yeah. Is what makes the town crazy. Just like how the Nazi regime removed what really made Germans German, which was their rich yeah. history and all yeah. that. And something like that at least yeah that's at least how I'm, I'm I'm, i don't it. think i'm explaining it that well but i'm yeah. following um the other scene in question i that tie this is pretty well only those two scenes right that make any kind of sense yeah with, with my reading here everything else is just too fun i like when he fights the fake bear that's awesome <laughs> yeah that, that confused me for yeah. a lot that was weird well, i was kind of thinking that's kind of like this isn't the national animal for russia bear too so like it's kind of this german fighting this bear kind of thing it's like a German Russian, I don't know. But there's no bear. There's no bear there. I don't know what it means, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send an email to Herzog. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was that bear? Dude? But the answer is what bear? <laughs> or just like <laughs> Russia. I knew it, fuck. I fucking knew it, dude. I fucking knew it. Um yeah, the other scene is the uh the hurdy gurdy player. Yeah. That guy's cool. I like him. That's yeah. my favorite character, I think. Yeah. <laughs> when he was, he was cool. When the, the guy's dancing with his dead best friend, the fucking hurdy gurdy guy's going to town on that yeah. thing. Or once the once the factory's burning, he starts singing, "The factory is on fire." Just keeps singing over and He's over again. He's the best, this guy. Yeah, he is the best. There is no one better than a hurdy gurdy guy. A nice pinch on him, nice fat pinch on this dude. Yeah, <laughs> this eighteen twenty, or I guess seventeen twenties would be eighteenth century. Yeah, that's seventeen hundred. Yeah, yeah, seventeen twenties pinch, <laughs> solid dude. <laughs> solid um but yeah in that tavern scene um Hyas describes kind of the events that happened in germany in contemporary times kind of that's when yeah. when he was seeing the future i was like i'm gonna have to look all this shit up because mm -hmm. i'm sure this is shit that happened in yeah. herzog's time yeah well like there's a few things that i'm not getting like a few throwaway lines i don't know if they're throwaway lines okay. or if they actually mean things but he talks about World War Two at first, and then the Cold War after that. Okay, are the two kind of big chunks that he talks about. Because okay. he mentioned the one that stood out to me was mm -hmm. uh, the the Tower of Iron that burns mm -hmm. down and the whole city's leveled. Yeah, I was like, I gotta search that yeah. up because that's definitely something. Yeah. Well, I thought that would be Paris, where the Nazis invade Paris. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought at least. Okay, and uh, yeah, but th that that whole section it's all reference to yeah. World War Two, like. Um, I should have wrote. I should have written it down. What he says exactly, but um, that first section was World War Two, and the second, the second part's like the clearing of the benches. Yeah, that was weird. That part's the Cold War. Okay, where he's saying like, oh, you got, oh, I just remembered some stuff from the World War Two thing. He's like, oh, and uh, um, uh, a great master will come, and he will uh, try and reign over uh, some other things, and then the neighbor from the sea will come and kill the master or something. So that's like okay, the yeah. U.S. kind of intervention in World War Two. Right. So it kind of, all the things are veiled slightly, you know, but World War II is the first one. Yeah. And the clearing of the benches here, uh, yeah, the one thing, this is the first time I know, I realized what the second one meant. I never okay. knew what the clearing of the benches was, but it's like, he's saying, oh, there's going to be two men sitting on either side of a bench and neither one's want to give the other one more room. So it's like uh, the Western world and the Eastern world, or yeah. like the first and second world. And they're both trying to expand either communism or capitalism completely without letting the other one do it. Right. So there's the two guys on the bench kind of doing that, not letting the other one have any more room than themselves. Doesn't he say one will ask the other to leave the bench and he will? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I thought the clearing of the benches was that they both kind of ask each other to leave the mm -hmm. bench so they can have room and then they both leave. Well, I thought they both uh, die at the end. I thought they both nuked each other at the end. If I'm remembering. Uh... That's a little excessive for a bench. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. It could have been a nice sunny day, dude. But, uh, yeah, what else is there? Oh, and he's talking about, like, in between those two sections, like, um, 
man will not trust his uh, his brother. And I was thinking that's more like uh, like East and West Germany kind of thing. You okay. can't, or East and West Berlin. Right. You can't cross over kind of thing. You're stuck in this fucking... And this would be like height of Cold War time, pretty well, 67. Pretty well the peak of it. Or around before the peak, right before. 67? Mm. Wouldn't this be the decline? Would it be? Aren't we in the decline already? I thought like the 60s or when's was the missile peak? crisis? Oh, that's 65-ish, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think so, so. But he'd have it in recent memory, at least. Right. Very recent memory. Um, Cause, well, oh yeah, because the moon landing was what, 69? 69, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, so 76 would definitely be near the end. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, that's what that's what uh, my reading is uh, of it at least, or that he's just uh, Hyas is a, a good soothsayer and he can really see things that happen. But then I don't know how that historical reading or the kind of oh, be like be friendly to each other, don't bomb each other kind of thing. Yeah. How that ties into the hopeful and hopeless allegory that we see. Yeah. Because it's it's just like a a distilled version of the actual movie story where like everyone goes nuts on the thing and then they leave on a, a pointless journey they're all throwing the glass in the thing mm -hmm. these guys are all on an island going stupid together or like just alienated together yeah and then they all leave for the end of the world even though it's a globe i'm not sure how they tie together maybe he's just saying even if there was this community of humans who were isolated from history mm. shit like this would still happen like that's just human Maybe nature that. okay you know yeah i can see that that makes sense like there's hope for humans and that we learn from our mistakes but yeah. we'll always be human so it's kind of hopeless at the same oh, time that's true i never thought of that before that's probably it that's a good reading yeah 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 no that's that's nice i gotta rewrite uh, an essay from a year and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was so no one knew what the fuck i was talking about no one could find youtube clips of anything dude <laughs> just give an a fuck yeah i'll take it i'll fucking take it um i have one more note pretty well do you have any uh note to i have a i have a few questions to? yeah yeah but i can wait till you're done your notes. okay well mine was just like a style note kind of thing because um I said this is the uh, the same style as Nosferatu, except Nosferatu ain't too good. Okay. Yeah. Um, Herzog's Nosferatu. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. The original one kicks ass from like nineteen twelve right, or yeah. something. That one's cool. But um, the the original that's the one that uh, it features in SpongeBob, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Herzog the Herzog's Nosferatu, I believe it's eighty two. 1982 okay. i think and it's the exact same style as this movie shot the exact same way pretty well like the yeah. kind of deep wide angle stuff or like wide uh what do you call it the deep focus okay wide lens deep focus uh super harsh shadows super high contrast um but it doesn't work i don't know why it doesn't work interesting cause something about it doesn't work that's weird because i i mean just i haven't seen it but i yeah. think that would suit a nosferatu film pretty uh, yeah. fucking well it's weird because he does everything right, Herzog, in the movie. Everything's done as you go, oh, this is going to be a fucking great movie. Yeah. But it stinks, the movie. Weird. And I don't know why it stinks. Huh. Like, it's got fucking Bruno Gantz, killer dude, best mustache in 1970s. <laughs> Bruno Gantz from uh, The American Friend with uh, Vim Vendors. I think okay. we talked about that before. Yeah. Sick-ass, dope-ass mustache. I'm not sure he has it in the movie. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Bruno Gans. You got Klaus Kinski as fucking Nosferatu with teeth this long. That's the guy who's pretending to be Jesus and freaking out and stuff. Like, he's got all the pieces together. He's yeah. got this sick style of shooting it. He's got guys he's been working with for like 20 years. And the movie sucks, though. That is weird. And uh, we might have to do it just to see why it's stinks. Yeah, we might. Yeah, we might have to. I, I took a couple notes here about why I think it might stink. Okay. So, A, it's a shot for shot remake. Right. Pretty well shot for shot. That is pretty restricting. So I don't know if his personal style isn't getting through enough because, oh, I have to get this low angle boat shot because yeah, this is what yeah. Murnau did. I have to get this fucking close up because that's what Murnau did. Why I don't did... know if it's exactly shot for shot, but the scenes are in the exact same order. Everything yeah. just happens exactly the same. Okay. It'd be interesting yeah. to watch them back to back, side by side. That'd be pretty cool too. 
they're pretty well the same now. I'm trying to yeah. trying to think of spots, but they, they it's pretty well shot for shot, I'd say, or eighty five percent shot for shot. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because mm. you're the you're our uh, resident Herzog expert here. But I, I out of the two of them, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, like Herzog. Uh, everything he does is thought through. I think so. Yeah. Everything he does has some purpose yeah. to his film. Yeah. So if he did a shot by shot remake, mm. there's a fucking reason he yeah. did it. You know. Yeah, my idea would be because I think Murnau is his favorite filmmaker of all time. So I think he's just paying homage almost. Yeah. Or something like that. He it's just... also he was like the first big German filmmaker guy. So maybe he's doing another tie into history kind of thing. Yeah. But I don't think there's really a reason to do shot for shot remake really. I mean I just watched the first one. So yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, definitely. Yeah, that's the first notch against it. And it's in an urban setting. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm already turned off. I'm out. <laughs> So yeah, it's like a like big city, okay, 18th yeah. century stuff. Or is it Venice? Yeah, I think it's in Venice. It takes place. Is that in Germany or in Italy? That's in Italy. There's a lot of canals. I don't know where it is. Is there a canal in German city? I don't know. Is Nosferatu? Vienna? Oh, it might be Vienna. That's that's Austria. Sw- that's like Switzerland or something. I don't, I don't know. know. That's not Fuck. Germany though. Listen up, Herzog. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, whichever fucking. German city. It's kind of what you'd expect it to look. You know, with the white fucking paint, the like on the houses, the A frame with the black kind of yeah. Xed wood on the outside, like what you expect, like a German medieval right, village yeah. to look like. But kind of like big city, and you got the the tiled or cobblestone right. streets and stuff, and people in carriages and nice boats and everything. Okay, that so it's not super. It. Well, modern. it's still no, not modern. No, it still takes place in whatever seventeen uh, fifty. Okay, all right, but like urban seventeen fifty right yeah okay it's uh interesting yeah i don't know if they're because you you definitely feel a different Time. vibe in it yeah okay because this movie you feel like you're out in the fucking country like you're out in the bush there's some weirdos in this fucking town you know this girl with the goose and everything right yeah. in uh in heart of, heart of glass. glass i mean yeah yeah and then in nosferatu you're kind of like well these are just kind of normal guy like the main guy, uh, Jonathan, he's a realtor. He's trying to sell houses and stuff. Oh, okay. And he's got a new fiance. And he's, it's too quotidian. Is that the right word? It's too like every yeah. day almost. Yeah. It's not as weird. It seems like, oh, that's the guy who does the books. That's the fucking guy who brings the carriages. Okay, go over here. Oh, there's a gypsy uh, caravan or something. I think he stops at a gypsy hotel or something in it. Okay. So I think that might be one thing. But if he changed it, it wouldn't be... Like the Dracula story, though, because you're supposed to go from the civilized to the wild, you know. Mm-hmm. So, like Dracula's castle would be the wild. So you need that kind of crossover, yeah, for it to work into uh, the land of phantoms. I think that's a way better title than Nosferatu. I think the first one is supposed to be called the Land of Phantoms. I like that better than Nosferatu. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, Nosferatu semicolon the Land of Phantoms. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be alright. This one is Nosferatu, comma the Vampire with a Y. Oh, that's Herzog's? Yeah, that's Herzog's. Okay, because I've seen, I've seen posters and yeah. shit for that one. I didn't yeah. think that was Herzog's. Yeah, that's Vampire. The Vampire. Yeah, yeah Vampire. Like yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Mm, the reason it's called Nosferatu is because Dracula was copyright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard that. That's funny. That is, yeah. Uh, the second thing, or the third notch against Nosferatu I have here is that the cutting's faster. Oh. I think the slow pace of this movie helps it a lot. Yeah. It's not fast, the movie, no. but it's faster than this. Okay. But it, that's fast for Herzog. That'd be fast for Herzog. Well, for this time in the career, kind okay, of, it'd yeah. be fast for him. Okay. Because in this movie, it's almost like two shots per scene, like three shots, maybe, yeah. but always like wide, big shots and stuff. Yeah. Thinking back, I think that Heart of Glass is a little faster than Shrochek. Maybe, yeah. But because... Yeah. It's so weird and everything. And because there's really only one setting, mm. it doesn't feel fast. No. And because everyone... Mm. Like, it's almost like there are more scenes. Yeah. But because everything in each scene is so slow, you yeah. don't notice that it's cut faster. No, exactly. And it kind of... It makes you go, oh, we're kind of in the cut. Or we're yeah. in a different time. We're at a slower pace. We're going... Uh, we can take a breath here. I don't know if you want to take a breath there. It's a weird place. Yeah. But... Uh, 
Yeah, Nosferatu is more normal. Like you get a shot, okay. reverse shot kind of thing. Okay, we'll do a big dolly in here, do something like that. Like it's more of a normal movie. Okay. More of a movie. Yeah. So I think that might go against the style or the, uh, not the mise-en-scene, but like the, well, I guess so, the lighting and everything, how everything's right. set. And then my last thing here is that it's an actual narrative. It's like a, just a normal story. There's no, uh, I don't know, there's no big metaphor to it or there's no kind of weirdness okay, yeah. that you have to, what the fuck does that mean? It's what just was a plot film. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah, okay. you're, We're not sitting here going, well, the clearing of the benches, was it this or was it right, this yeah. kind of thing? Everything's laid out for you in the movie. You okay. go, okay, he's a vampire. He goes here with uh, the plague. You got to kill him. That's the story. Right. But I mean, you're doing a shot for shot remake. You're not going to change the fucking story of Dracula or the Count right, Dracula. Yeah. Um, but there, there, I mean, there could be some like historical context that we could go into. Mm. Like the original Nosferatu came out when? I think 1912. So we can like compare the mm. era that that was made in and compare the yeah. era Herzog made it in and, and like use Dracula as some metaphor during that yeah. era. That's like the only reason I could think for Herzog to make a shot by shot remake My is if there was some parallel he was trying to draw between Germany in those times or between the world in those times. It was 1922, not 1912. Okay. Mistake. But, um, so the Great Depression, did mm, that affect? I don't think so. Was that just in North yeah. America? But even Nosferatu, the original Nosferatu, I think that was just like a money grab kind of thing too. Oh, yeah. I think it was just supposed to be a big box office. Okay. Let's get like our movies in the, the European market. Okay. They just needed a big box office kind of movie. Interesting. But... Um, so maybe know. that's what Herzog was. Maybe Herzog needs some money. Maybe. It's like, this shit worked before. Let's try it again. I don't know if it made any money. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Uh, I paid one time. I paid for a ticket once. But uh, two times, I would not pay for two times. I bought the movie twice, too. I fucked up, too. <laughs> I have it twice on Blu-ray for a I did that with fucking the, idiot. I did that with the uh, Confucius. Okay. The Analects or whatever. Yeah. The book. I bought it, and then I bought it like a year later, and I... Went to put it in my library and I put it right like, next oh, to the oh, other one. Order. Yeah, exactly. Damn it. Fuck. I was like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> I just gave it to my dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck, another movie I don't like? Let's put it in there. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, but it's not good, the movie. Yeah, yeah. And that's the last of my notes Okay. on this. I, I have it. I mean, because the, the thing is with this movie is like, you could pick any line of dialogue. Mm in heart of glass and say is this important or is this just hypnotic fucking random yeah, shit yeah because like at, th at the beginning i mean now that i think about it in regards to herzog's mission with uh cinema and german history mm -hmm. this quote kind of makes sense to me already okay but in the beginning during hyas's first speech mm -hmm. he says time will tumble and then the earth Okay. So time will fall apart before the earth falls apart. Yeah. But, I mean, to me, that makes sense in a few ways. Mm -hmm. One way is that, I mean, humans are really the only people keeping track of time. Yeah. And humans will definitely die before the earth dies. Oh, good point. Yeah. So that checks out there. Yeah. But I think he means more that history will die out. That could be And then too. the earth yeah. will die. Yeah. I think like, both, we'll, both those yeah. reading, well, they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, too. yeah. But yeah, I think you're right on the money with that. Yeah, like time yeah. time will tumble is him saying like we fucked our history up. Yeah, the erasure of our, of yeah. our history and then we'll all kill ourselves or something. Yeah. Is he he talks something about like or a few people, I guess like that the power that culture has to like personal identity and national identity and how like that keeps you sovereign is through your culture. There's some kind of art reading like that like uh, one thing I just read was uh, the Kalevala, which is like uh, Finnish uh, folk tales from like a thousand, okay. one thousand A.D. Yeah, and the collection of those in the eighteen hundreds led to Finnish independence from Russia. Okay, they said, "Oh well, we have our own history, we have our own yeah. folk song, mythology, and everything. We're our own people, separate from Russia." So that through their culture, they separated themselves as their own sovereign nation. Okay, forget how the sentence started how i started the sentence but um it, there's something like you'd want to keep your culture to 
I don't know, keep the, the right. nation strong or keep your, your that, own identity together. That same mentali- mentality mm. is what started German nationalism as well. Yeah, but it was like perverted a bit, though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, a, a big reason philology mm. isn't called philology anymore yeah. or isn't taught in universities mm. as philology yeah. is because philology was used by the Nazis heavily. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there was before, like, during during the unification of Germany, mm-hmm. there were, like, massive debates about whether or not Beowulf was German. Okay. And the argument was that if Beowulf was German, then all that northern land belonged to Germany. Oh, okay. And it was, like, this big oh, question of... Sense. The Sudetenland. Maybe. I think that's... Yeah? The, yeah. Well, I think that's... I don't know. German-speaking people outside of Germany, actually. Okay. I think that's what that was. But I remember... I took uh, a class on Tolkien and mm-hmm. uh, translation, mm-hmm. and we did like Old English philology yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And Tolkien's big thing was that, like, you know, let's not do that with philology. Okay. Like, that's not what it's about. Yeah. To him, philology was about understanding Beowulf as a piece of art mm-hmm. and not using that piece of art as a means for yeah. any political gain. I but, mean, like, even so, yeah, so, like, any nation can use their own culture as a means Mm -hmm. to to yeah solidify their identity but also it can be corrupted pretty easily yeah yeah but i mean you take out the kind of oppressive and uh (laughs) yeah those parts of it but i mean Uh, even then yeah that that could also Mm -hmm. be herzog's argument yeah is that our culture is very important but Mm -hmm. you know let's not oh yeah i guess let's not fucking pervert it he does talk about like world war ii and the cold war after that yeah but i mean um talking about before uh, beowulf we talked about i don't know what i was gonna finish say. the fairy finish. tales were you done with that finish story fairy tale. that's a good one that's cool dude. Yeah. that's fucking weird um yeah we'll get back to it sometime okay. but um or yeah what i was gonna say it's like uh you kind of have to be the underdog for that to work though you have to be like the oppressed not yes. the oppressor for yeah. that to work yeah so as long as you're doing that as long as you're uh, a finn living in uh russian occupied finland yeah that makes then sense. it works for you but if you're uh if you're russia in occupied finland yeah. then probably don't pull that card yeah that makes sense yeah huh two sides of whatever <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well uh do you have anything uh yeah, yeah. also in the beginning in yeah. his first speech he mentions that uh, a thief will cross one bridge and a liar will cross the other yeah what's that I don't know what that is. I don't is. know what that is. I don't either. know. But I think that whole first scene might just be to set him up. Yeah? As the you don't f- think there's any... I don't know. I mean, he's telling the future. You'd think... Yeah. Uh, you'd a think... thief will cross one, and a liar will cross the other. I can't imagine. A I assumed it was some... Liar. Like, I, right off the bat, before knowing anything about the movie, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, that's got to be some foreshadowing for what's going to happen yeah. next. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> fucking no one enters the village except for him yeah <laughs> he's the only one well you could be the thief and the liar <laughs> could be both uh, how much do you think is him bsing it yeah i don't know <laughs> that's what i would because a lot of it seems yeah i'd like to believe a, a lot of it is just straight out of herzog's mind i think so because it's some fucking weird yeah. shit he well, says. for sure herzog wrote every single line of dialogue in it yeah too. but i mean but just the line you read like time will tumble and then the earth that's a cool ass line. Yeah, dude. it is. There's some cool fucking lines in the movie. Yeah, especially in like shit like that sounds fucking cool in German. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. German's a really cool yeah. language. Medieval German. Like, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. 18th century German sounds pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it does. Like it's like it's like a it's a whole different type of mythic. Because mm-hmm. like ancient yeah. languages are like mystic kind yeah. of, mm-hmm. but like medieval German yeah. is like. It's like folklore. Yeah, like, yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. It's really cool. Well, it feels like you're on the edge of something weird, you yeah. know? Like you're on the threshold it's a lot of darker. strangeness, yeah. It's less mysterious and more, like, ominous. Yeah, sinister ominous. Yeah. Well, not sinister, but, like, foreboding. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. A liar will cross one and a thief the other. I mean, you could put any kind of historical thing on it. You yeah, I guess. Any, oh, this is uh, whoever, or this yeah. is whoever. But, I mean, you... You might have to talk to Herzog yourself right. just to see. Yeah, because I could just name any two historical figures. Well, and, oh, so. That one's the yeah. thief. That one's there the liar. Easy as that. Done deal. Yeah. Because it might also just be... 
Herzog's way to prove to the audience that he really can see the future. Mm, that's the right idea. after yeah. he says it, yeah. they walk over the bridge. Yes. Yeah. It's also pretty good uh, timing. You think that when it's a big walkie talk or something, they're coming across? Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a technical question. Yeah. About uh, how digital filmmaking was at that point. Oh, it didn't exist? No, eh? Nothing existed, That's what I yeah. figured. Because th- there's a scene where they speed up the mist in the mountains. Yeah. Did they yeah. just run the film faster than usual? Yeah. Well, you, that How was that probably work? like... Um, you you might have to re-expose... Well, not re-expose, but you'd have to like reshoot what you shot almost. So like you could fucking shoot something normal speed. Mm-hmm. You'd shoot it. Um I'll give you two ways you could have done it. Okay. I'm not sure which one they could have done. Um you'd shoot at normal speed and then you'd play it on a wall, whatever triple speed or something, like triple crank. Yeah. And then you'd film the projection. Oh, okay. You could do that. But that's what people did in like car scenes and stuff. Right. Where you'd have you know where it's going in the background. Yeah, yeah. That's how you do that like rear That always looks super shit. It never works, yeah, really. Unless it's like stylized it's supposed to be like that. Like uh that's a good example. Uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is pretty fucking cool when you're okay. in there. Uh, it's like a low angle of, uh, I forget the guy's name, uh, not Johnny Depp, the other guy in that. Del Toro? Benicio Del Toro? Is it actually him? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So it's Benicio driving all stoned, and then it's like Las Vegas, but like moving oh, all Oh, yeah, up I know enough. exactly what you mean. That's okay. pretty cool. So it works in those, but in like the actual 40s movies and right, stuff. Yeah. Like, so you'd shoot something normal, and then like play it on the wall, but fast or as slow as you wanted it okay you could refilm it or do whatever you wanted to yeah so you could rear screen or rear project it and uh the other way you could have done it was uh, an under crank like long exposure i don't know what you'd call it but it's like under cranking it where like instead of taking like your shutter speed instead of being 80 times per second you'd have it like w- once a minute or something okay. if the fault depending on how fast you want the thing yeah so like or you do it every 15 seconds or something. Whoosh, 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 one exposure with the time in between. And you do your full, like, 10-minute reel of film would end up taking 10 hours or something. And then you play it back normal speed, and it'd be fast. Okay. Fast. So it'd just be like doing something with less frames per second to make Pretty it look quicker. Yeah. Well, it'd okay. be like an animation almost. Yeah. Like you take a picture every 10 minutes right. or something. Yeah. Okay. Same way we do, like, a time lapse. Thing, yeah, yeah. But they had to do, like, a mechanical time lapse okay. instead of a digital time lapse. That's probably what they did, though. Yeah, but it's, it's all the same stuff. It all it all works the same. Yeah, yeah. You do it the same way, digital, manual. Right. Okay. Because that that I was like, how are they doing this? It's pretty cool though. It looks like weird. It looks like milk almost. Yeah. It's coming down. Yeah. Yeah. It looks very interesting. Thick, thick fog. Thick, thick fog. So yeah, those are the two ways they. Okay. Cool. You could have done it. You can kind of tell usually rear screen projection because it looks kind of shittier. Yeah, definitely. Like you'd see a lot, lo- uh, the quality would go down. Yeah, it, they, they always look super and flat. They, they did? Okay. Oh, no, no, no I'm looked, saying like okay, when, yeah. when, when, when people do use that technique, yeah. it always looks super flat. Yeah. Like it looks like a fucking... Like you're projecting it on a wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's one cool thing in uh, a few movies, but it's like a cheap thing to do. But it's like, it works so well. Well, actually, we talked about it already in um, The Other Side of the Wind. We just have a guy with two flashlights behind you, and you just make it completely black, and you throw water on the fucking car, and it just looks like you're in pitch black. Oh, yeah. And it works fucking yeah. way better than anything, dude. It works way better than uh, in Psycho or something when you're watching some speeding car behind you, you know? Yeah. Um, saw that movie twice this semester. Psycho? Yeah. For the same class? Two different classes. I think they must have like a quota or something. Same day too. (laughs) All right, our second feature, same movie. (laughs) Double feature, same thing. You paid for the class, asshole. (laughs) Psycho is one of those movies where like, I've heard so much about it, I feel like I don't even need to watch it at this point. I don't think there's really much to talk about about it. It's uh, Like I've seen like spoofs of it so many times and like, I don't think I'm missing anything. Like, I don't even think it's that, like, banger of a movie. Yeah. They're... Although, I did think that about The Shining. Oh, yeah? Because I had, I had heard so much about The Shining. Yeah. I knew everything about it. I had seen millions of spoofs. Mm-hmm. But when I finally watched it, it was, like, completely different. Yeah. Blew me away. You might like Psycho then, but I mean... I mean, Kubrick is different. Yeah. Than... Because this is a straightforward movie. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Psycho. But I do love horror. Yeah. 
They're so just maybe like, just historically, I'd appreciate it more if I watched maybe. it. I don't know. I mean, it's a fun thing to watch once, maybe. Yeah. Now, I mean, maybe right. in the nineteen six. I think it was nineteen sixty. It came out exactly. I think so too. Maybe in sixty one, it was uh, incredible. Well, for a slasher movie too. Right. That's what I mean. Like yeah. historically, maybe I'll enjoy yeah. it, but. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. That's another movie that was made shot for shot again. It was remade shot. For yeah, shot. with like fucking. Milos, uh, Foreman did it, I think. Yeah. I don't know who's in it. I never saw it. Ah, it's so like garbage think, too, isn't it? Yeah, he's like a comedian. He's always with that. He's always with uh, fucking what's his name, dude? Marley and me. Owen Wilson. He's always with Owen Wilson. In uh, movies. I know who you're talking about. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> really? He did Psycho. What the fuck? I don't know dude? if it's the one you're talking about, but he did a Psycho remake. That sounds like it would be. I gotta look at that. Yeah. What the that. Are you serious? <laughs> I, I'm almost fucking positive it's Vince Vaughn. That's insane. Yeah, he came up right away, dude. There you go, dude. Vince Vaughn, Psycho. Is it the one you're talking about? Oh no, Gus Van Zandt. Okay, yeah, I thought it was Milos Forman. Same kind of thing. Okay, but it is that yeah, movie. Yeah, it's that same one. He's Norman Bates in it. Who's the girl? In this one, in the Vince Vaughn uh, one. Anne Hatch. Okay, I don't think I know who that is. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. But yeah, that's a shot for shot remake of the original. Okay. That, it looked like a shot for shot remake. I saw a trailer and I was like, yeah, I don't know who that is. And I was like, uh, Vince Vaughn? No, thank you. I'm not watching that. I think I. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, really. No. But it's supposed to be like the nice guy, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but Vince Vaughn's a fucking goof. Yeah. He's, he's in some good shit, though. Is he? Ah, I can think of uh, Swingers as good. I can think of Swingers. <laughs> um. <laughs> But that's not even Vince Vaughn. That's like uh, that other guy. Uh, who's the guy doing like Iron Man movies and shit now? He's doing like the new Star Wars like TV show or something. Another Italian kind of guy. I forget his name. All I'm thinking of is Robert Downey Jr. Because you said. Uh, what did you say? Well, he was, you he said was, Iron Man. Right? Yeah, Iron okay. Man. I think he's the producer and then he directed the last few Iron Mans. Oh. Iron Man. I don't he's, know. Uh, you know, his, his like butler helper guy. It's like an Italian looking guy. Iron Man's butler? Iron Man. Not his butler, but like his buddy kind of guy. He's like, oh, I brought you the car, sir, or something, you know? Is that even a thing? I forget. I think so. He's you think in, no, he's he's in, in Batman, movies, dude? No, no. I'm thinking, <laughs> of Iron, I'm thinking of Iron Man. I gotta look this up. Yeah, you gotta look this up. I have Iron no idea Man what you're talking about. 2. Let's see what comes up. Uh, John Favreau. John Favreau. Yeah, John that Favreau. name does sound familiar. Yeah. John Favreau. Oh yeah, this guy. yeah. But yeah, so Swingers is like a John Favreau movie. Okay, because he's like, actually funny. funny. He's funny. He's good. Yeah. And Swingers is fucking okay. awesome, dude. That's a movie we can talk about. That's so funny. That movie. Because I think Vince Vaughn is uh, bad. He's made a few bad choices. I think. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't made the best choice after post Swingers. <laughs> it's like his third movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that movie's awesome. Um, Have you seen the uh, what is it? Fuck the internship. With Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson? No. They intern at Google after their, like, oh, sales company shuts down or something? I think I something? did, yeah. That's Dude, like that's a, fucking yeah. dog shit, that yeah. movie. Yeah, well... Man, if you like that movie and you're listening, you can go ahead and stop listening to this <laughs> podcast, please. I'm sure there's a few that are just dog shit, dude. Dude, uh, I'm sure we could name quite a few. Yeah, probably. Just read his IMDb off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vince gotta... Vaughn, if you're listening, I'm sorry. We'd love to have you on the show. John Favreau, good stuff. John. <laughs> good stuff, John. Johnny's got some good stuff in the works. The uh, Matt Maltadorian, what's the fucking Matt Matt Matador? Matador, the no, dudes who do the bowls. Uh, it's supposed to be the uh, same guy as uh, Boba Fett. Jabba Fett. Jabba Fett. Ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. What are you talking about? You, don't, you don't know this? It's like a new TV show coming out, dude. No, I have no yeah. idea what you're talking about. John Favreau directing a new show about Boba Fett. Really? Yeah. Well, it's, where's it going to air? Disney owns. I think it's Disney online. Disney owns somewhere. everything. Probably Disney Plus or whatever. The Mandalorian, streaming. it's called. The Mandalorian. John Favreau's live action TV show. The Mandalorian. It looks sick, dude. Oh, okay. It's the only picture they have, but it looks fucking cool. Interesting. Have you heard of. Uh, Fuck, dude. <laughs> oh, man. It's a new Daniel Radcliffe movie. I don't think so, then. Uh, It's like something akimbo. Oh, wait a second, actually. Guns akimbo. The only pictures they have so far 
are of Daniel Radcliffe in his underwear with giant slippers with two guns glued to his hands yelling at the cop. That's pretty good, dude. dude. It looks insane. Guns akimbo. But like, that's funny. Yeah, this I, is the only picture anyone has. That's no awesome. one's heard about the movie since. It's not out yet or anything? No. No one knows what's up. Well, I can't wait for it to come out. Dude, I can't. Dude, it looks fucking hilarious. That does look hilarious. It looks He's so... He's making good choices. Dude, Daniel He's Radcliffe good knows what's up. He's choices, dude. Ratty boy knows how to do it. Guns Akimbo. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> <laughs> that is where I remembered Akimbo from. Okay, cool. Good to know. <laughs> you know the... Your secondary weapon you can do... I, don't know. I think so. You ever played Modern Warfare 2? I did. Do you know that there's a new Call of it's Duty? The only video game I ever played. Coming out. <laughs> oh no. There's Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. Okay. And the newest Call of Duty is also going to be called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. They're just <laughs> literally like, they can't what? think of a new title, so we're just going to use an old one. Well, if it's as good as uh, Modern Warfare 2, <laughs> That's I won't the one get with it dust. still. Yeah, that dude. Dust? That one's the yeah, best, dude. dude. That's the best one of all time. That was the best one of that all time. That is the best. That's when we're... Uh, 360 well, no-scopes all day long. You got it. <laughs> Fucking throwing knife battles. Those are fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have any more uh, lines uh, written down from a uh, hearse house glass? Um, the For first... sure it's not glass. That's not the trend. It's just G-L-A-S. Is it just G-L-A-S. One S. One S. What's glass in that? Is that me making up a word? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess so. <laughs> uh, the first thing I wrote was, I love cows. Opens with a nice oh, show yeah. of cows. It cows is some cool. fun cow stuff. Yeah. Um, the music we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. It is sick. It is very cool. It is uh, ext- Popol Vol. It's the band. Okay. It's extremely hypnotic. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, like if I could just like sit in a black room and listen to that music, I'd fucking freak out. Yeah. It's pretty it's in a sick, good way. though. Yeah. Well, it's like big kind of, uh, what do you call it? Uh those voices uh, like operatic singing choral. kind of yeah choral what is it usually one voice isn't it most of the time yeah i think so yeah these kind of also kind of sounds rural though it sounds like country yeah music not country music it's like, but like folky music. but it's yeah, like music of the folk like almost like hall yeah folky because it's like nice and deep mm-hmm. and there's like tons of reverb yeah nice and, and there's spacey. the rocky stuff too when they're talking about yeah. the future and the end of the world and stuff or the the growing of the new world from the old one yeah that's uh then there's the of course there's the sick. harp harps are always fucking cool and yeah trippy. yeah that harp song does i get annoyed oh when yeah I see the harp ah fucking the guy's playing ding 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 do it four times buddy <laughs> switch it up fuck. i don't hear it 16 times fuck I don't care if it's 1731 or 1732, but yeah. you can pick four different chords. Fuck. That's a, I didn't notice, but hey, that's a good point. I get annoyed. On, on, <laughs> on the 17th viewing in a movie, I get annoyed from it. Fuck. Um, that's a cool scene, too, though, when the old man locks her in the thing to get killed. Yeah, it is. Ludmila. That is a cool scene. Yeah, I like Ludmila. She's pretty cool, and then she just dies. He's yeah. always yelling and uh, flustered all the time. Ah, breaking everything. Or what's the guy say? Break as much as you want. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's tired of her bullshit. Keep all breaking right, stuff. Break Doesn't as matter much as you ways. want. We're going to have all the glass soon. <laughs> uh, fuck, that's funny. I wonder if that's a reaction to the hypnosis or if they're acting the kind of like, because you, it's always a delay and then like, ah, or something yeah. like a single yell. She yells a lot for like she no does. reason yeah. too. Yeah. But when anything happens, yeah, Hyas is outside talking about the future. She's crying and freaking out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the uh, the farm maid in there, uh, the yeah, bald, she that's she, a she, crazy she, scream fuck, that she man. has. Yeah, and her hands are going nuts yeah. too. Her Fantastic. head shaved. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, she, Naked she's... in bed again. <laughs> Slaps her on the ass. Also, that fucking blanket just looked like one giant pillow. Did it? Oh, I didn't notice. You didn't notice? No, dude? I didn't it, notice. Just no a bends. garbage thing. Like it's like literally just like a pouch full of hay. <laughs> probably that's probably what it was. Exactly. It's like soup. It's like fucking two feet thick. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't bend when she flips it over. It's, <laughs> it's like a, a whole yeah. It's like it's a whole fucking mattress. mattress. <laughs> Naked in between the two mattresses again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. But that Davenport looks the same as a few couches i've seen in fucking That's buddy's true. houses around here too. so i mean yeah couch development hasn't changed much in 350 or in 250 years couch science took a back seat when we invented the internet i think let me tell you in, <laughs> in 1740 when the internet came out yeah, exactly <laughs> the couch <laughs> fucked off <laughs> uh but yeah the music uh popol vol they do uh i think all the music up until the 80s 
for him. Okay. Yeah, because um, you mentioned I, the name yeah, sounded familiar. Yeah. From well, Shortek. I think Popol Vol. I think that's like a Indian, like Far East Indian. I think it's uh, like a holy book of theirs. Okay. I think it's called the Popol Vol. I don't know. I could Google it. Guess what? Fucking do it yourself, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's, it's some kind of like Eastern myth okay. book or holy cool. book, Popol Vol, something like that at least. Yeah, just the name. But um, they do a, a Gary the Wrath of God, which is another banger one. Yeah, when the music is very prominent in that okay. in that movie, we should do that one sometime too. That's yeah, yeah, one. we will. That is yeah, a fun yeah. one. Um, that might be the second most known besides uh, Fitz Geraldo. Yeah, I think so. The Gary the Wrath of yeah. God. I think, I mean, at least for me, I mm. I knew about Heart of Glass before I knew about oh, yeah? Wrath of God, yeah. Okay. But that might just be because of the movies I watched, oh, okay, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, was it because of us talking about it, or you heard it in the... No, I, have, I had heard of oh, yeah, Heart really? of Glass before, yeah. That's crazy. Well, you're well, you're more read than a uh, few of my film teachers. Yeah. <laughs> they have no fucking idea. Fuck, I'll apply for their positions. Uh, one of my things, well, uh, I forget which class it was maybe two years ago or something, some class with, I remember the teacher's name, I don't remember the class, but um, <clears throat> good teacher, Mark Steinberg, took him two times, good teacher, shout out Mark Steinberg. There you go. Good classes, Mark Steinberg's got animation class, good class. Cool. Um, and we had to do it on, uh, I think we picked the director or something or did something and I had to write this big essay or it was yeah. our final essay kind of thing. And I came, and we had to go talk to the TA with a big outline of everything. And I, in my outline, I think I had 60 movies of Herzog that I wanted to reference in the thing. Nice. And the guy's like, pick four, dude. <laughs> like, pick four good ones. You're not doing 60 movies. That's fucking funny. But it was like the name and like a two-sentence description of the movie. Yeah. It was, I think he's got 80 in total, and I've, I think that was every single one I'd seen. Okay. <laughs> it was all those ones. He's like, dude. You're not going to write this in any essay. <laughs> You're just bullshitting me and yourself. <laughs> Guess what? I only referenced three, you fucking TA. So. You fucking got him, dude. There you go. You, you fucking idiot got him, dude. You fucking idiot TA. <laughs> dude, um, I've had some fucking dummy TAs, yeah. dude. Let me tell you. Do you think oh they go out of their God. way to be stupid, fuck? Dude, I don't know. I feel like they're like, oh, I'm a TA. I can stop trying. <laughs> I can stop being smart now. In one essay, I wrote pop culture, and the guy wrote a big circle around it and wrote popular question mark. You told me that. What dude. else would it be, dude? Fuck, Popsicle man. culture? Fuck. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's always going to be popular culture. Jesus. That's some what fucking... What does pop culture mean? Was that for a film class, too? I think it was, yeah. Fuck, Just that's dummies. dumb as shit. Just dummies. Yeah. We're talking about popular culture. Yeah. <laughs> the class is media study. Jesus Christ. Oh, that might have been the Mark Steinberg class. It might have been media study. Something like that. Okay. Media something related. But um anyways, if you're at Concordia, take that teacher. Yeah, he's good. Mark Steinberg. Good guy. Um Yeah, that's kinda their uh, their kind of style, this kind of big music, big sound. He's just kinda like I don't know, they have more I'm trying to think now if it's more synthy stuff later on. Okay. But I think that a Gary the Wrath of God might be more synthy. I'm not sure. Maybe. So I don't know if it's just a style or a movie choice, what goes best with it. But I think they they might be more like synth, like, you know, the 70s kind of proggy, kind of synthy yeah, rocky yeah. stuff. They're kind of, they do that more in a Gary. Okay. But a Gary's awesome. That's fun as fuck. That's the one I told you where half English, half German, and no moats line up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get over the first 15 minutes, <laughs> like sit far back and you won't know. Okay, notice. yeah, cool. <laughs> if you watched it on that screen over there, you'd go, yeah, this movie's nuts, dude. Nick just pointed to a screen completely across the room. <laughs> Maybe what, 30 feet? Yeah, something the room. like that. Watch it 30 feet on a, fucking, <laughs> on a smaller TV and you'll fucking love it, dude. It's square format, too. Nice, dude. Sick. That's always interesting, sick. actually. I like it better, dude. Yeah? I like square format a lot. Dude. I mean, square format, I find, works well in theaters. It's pretty cool. But, pretty like, cool. on a TV, it's kind of like, all right, it looks what the fuck am I doing here? TV, yeah. And, like, if Computer you... works fine, though. Yeah? Computer works good. I, just for fun, well, a while ago, yeah. all the movies that we made and stuff, I put them all in 4-3 format. Okay. And they're way better, dude. Oh yeah, wait, sicker. Dude. Interesting. They look cool, dude. 
I just I had to rechange the fucking the newer one we're working on there to make it a bunch of four three stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I like it that much. <laughs> You're gonna see half the movie is square now. Dude. Nice. It looks sick, dude. I love it. Cool. But uh, yeah, I like uh, I like cool. the opposite. Oh yeah, super I, wide. Super fucking wide, oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. As wide as we I can go, baby. Seriously, dude. Like cinema, cinema scope. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, dude. I'd fucking love that. Well, what's the thing? I think the movie's called. Oh, it was either War and Peace or like a Napoleon story. Well, apparently, Lawrence of Arabia is super wide. It's pretty wide. It's pretty wide. But that's like, I think that's just 70 millimeter. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe. But even 70 millimeter is twice as wide as anything yeah. else. Yeah. And then if you put some kind of mask on the 70 millimeter, right. make it even skinnier, that's pretty cool. That's the shit I like. That's the shit I like. But yeah. this uh, this movie, I think it was like also 1920s, like pre sound kind of stuff. It was either War and Peace or. Like the Napoleonic Wars, okay. something I don't remember what, but that kind of a period piece like that. Yeah, and um, it was uh, triple screen projected. Oh fuck! So they shot it with one camera here, one camera this way, and one camera this yeah. way. Yeah, shot every scene with three cameras and projected it around you when you watched it. That's fucking so cool. So you had like fucking three screens around you and watched it like that. But the movie was like six hours long and it cost three times okay, the amount yeah. of it. it's like we're never making this again dude. cool movie though. I've only seen excerpts of it that does I, sound fucking cool I can't even remember the title now cause like I but. sit like in theaters I sit like not front row front mm. row but like you know there's like that separation between the yeah, front section and the back section about, yeah I right said, there yeah I've moved to that section I yeah. used to be back of a theater guy no dude I moved right to the front hell yeah too. the front's it's where it's at now when you're kind of a little angled looking up yeah then it's more uh religious experience like, i agree oh, you're looking up yeah. at the you know who fucking who showed me Who's that, that? Halo. That? oh yeah yeah really yeah interesting enough tall, tall guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> tall guy um yeah i think the music is sick in the movie the costumes are pretty sick everything yeah. fits there's Every, no dude i like i can't looking back i can't think of a single thing i didn't like about this movie yeah it's pretty cool just because it's so weird and there's yeah. nothing else like it really yeah i can't think of another movie that's that strange or that immersive kind of the, the closest thing is funi satiricon that i've ever seen but even mm. that it's like such a different tone yeah and you can't really get into Fellini satiricon really because it's like nine episodes almost. it's true yeah this always, is one always pulling you out dream thing one full dream and yeah. it, it gets better as it goes the movie oh definitely yeah, yeah. That's slow at the beginning. Yeah, Heart of Glass fucking pulls you in. Yeah, it's crazy. I really like it. I forgot how much th- or how awesome this movie is. It is tremendous. Yeah, it really is tremendous. Not to not to not to spoil the reviews, but I think that I think I might be giving back to back perfect scores. On really? The podcast. Yeah. Wow, you're giving a higher score to Herzog than I think I'm going to give to Herzog. Really? <laughs> well, I don't know. Now that you say that, it's a pretty fucking good movie. Well, I can't think of anything I didn't yeah. like about it. Wow. Apart from that, I don't understand it well enough. Yeah. But that's not the movie's fault. No, I mean I don't understand anything. Here. Yeah, like I think it's almost part of it though. I it's think so vague. I think I'd like to revisit it for sure. Like uh, in yeah. a year or something. Okay, yeah. Do like a, a recap recap thing because I definitely need to rewatch this. Yeah. And I think I'd like to get my hands on the script mm-hmm. and analyze the script as if it's a like play. Yeah, but some things with like a Herzog script. Like, the script you'd probably find, like, you'd get somewhere online or something. Yeah. It would probably be direct pull from the movie stuff. But we don't know. Or, like, someone would watch the movie and just transcribe. Yeah, just the dialogue, yeah. But I don't know if that would get you a deeper understanding of the creative process, almost. Or what the intention was behind it. I'm okay with that, though. Yeah? Yeah, because I really, I want to understand this film as, like, just a... As it is. As it is, yeah. Yeah. Like, because the... The dialogue mm. is poetic. Yeah. And it, it definitely... I, I refuse to believe that this these characters' hypnotic ramblings are just random. I don't think they are at all. Yeah. 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 Like, they're definitely significant mm. to something. Yeah. But you can watch this entire thing on mute and pretty much understand just as much as yeah. you would with the sound on. We'd be just as confused for doing yeah, <laughs> yeah. Except for, like, yeah. maybe a few of Hyas' yeah. predictions. But about... you'd know... You'd understand that he's a special figure. Yeah, He's definitely. different than everybody else. Yeah. And, yeah, well, you'd understand there's a longing for something yeah. lost. And like, even just picking apart Hyas's, yeah. uh, like, predictions or whatever, mm. fortune-telling, mm. even just doing that would be interesting enough. I think, yeah, because I think each one of those are specific references. I think to so, things. too, yeah. yeah. 
I say this specific. Everything else might be more poetic, but these yeah. I think are direct. Him and things. the the master, I think their dialogue is probably the most important. That's where yeah, the master is the one where he's like, oh, the 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 glasses are blood, the glasses are yeah. land, or something. He and says. he's he's the one he says the title yeah. when they're in prison together. Oh yeah, you ever heard of glass? Yeah, he's yeah. like, because uh, Hyas says, I miss the forest because they're in prison. He says, mm-hmm. I miss the forest. Yeah, and the dude says, you don't miss people. I love you. You have a heart of glass. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck does that mean, dude? Like, how is... Yeah. Like, glass is fragile, but... Yeah. That's not, I don't think that's what he means. I don't think so. Because Ludmila is also, when she's looking at the glass, she's like, oh... Uh, yeah, she has her own little... little yeah. Towns and that was cool. How do you have a glass house, and how do people live in glass houses and stuff? Yeah. There's a lot of cool shit in it. Like, just weird type yeah. of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. One thing I'm not sure about, if it was a technical mistake or choice, when Ludmila's looking at the glasses, she turns it quickly, and in the edge you see a chip out of it, out of one of the cups. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Out of one of the, the glass cups. And then later on, the guy says, oh, if it gets one crack, it doesn't have a voice anymore, or it makes no sound when you right, yeah. rub it like that. And uh, I don't know if that was just inconsistency or just it doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter that it has a chip in it, or I don't know. Hmm. Interesting, but I I I fixated on that. A bit yeah. And go like, I don't know. Why wouldn't you just shoot it from the other side or right, something yeah. and make it look perfect? Or maybe it's oh, you don't want it to look perfect. There's still a chip in it. I I don't know what to to make of the thing. Maybe with a movie like this, everything's so like, well, why is he buying flour? What does flour? Yeah. You know, you can you can dig into anything. It's in true. It, and it's so. And it's also like. How long? How many takes can you do while someone's hypnotized? Exactly. Is I don't it like know. a one take? They, that's they, it. They probably got it perfect every time. That's what I'm too. saying. They like maybe the, the chip time. happened, and he's like, "Fuck it, I can't rehypnotize you. Yeah. You're fucking dead." That could be it. You know? Who yeah. knows? We're back with some reviews. <sighs> Get ready, boys. Strap in. Strap in and strap on, baby. <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> So, uh, start with the bad, get to the good. Yes. As per usual, we are on Letterboxd, where you can follow us and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so start with Half Star. That's the lowest rating you can give. I'm so glad this wasn't my first Herzog, (laughs) because if this was my first impression, I'd be inclined to never visit him. Really? I've never been so simultaneously confused and bored in my life. Really? Characters are introduced without establishing who they are, though calling the beings we see on screen characters might be too charitable. Rather, this guy's nuts. Rather, this guy doesn't get it from the start. <laughs> You're going to introduce every character. This guy's a nerd. Rather, they are mouthpieces for bullshit. <laughs> there are so many shots of landscapes with not even vague, pretentious voiceover, though rest assured this film has more than its fair share. I began every scene transition asking, who is that? What are they doing? Where are they? What's their goal? Who the fuck? What the fuck is going on? And all I got in answer was some shit about waterfalls. Were you ever curious about any of the characters? No, dude. That's I knew obviously everybody not was, the fucking though. point. Yeah, but I mean, no one's really that vague. And what kind of movie do you want that, that spells out every single character? Yeah. If you, oh, what is that? Is There's... that guy dealing drugs? I don't know. Is he a drug dealer? I can't tell. He hasn't been introduced to me as the drug dealer. <laughs> Oh, fuck, you see him doing it. I mean, yeah, that's what are those not... guys, blowing glass? Oh, they're probably carpenters. Yeah, that's fucking, what I was going to say. What a clown. The, <laughs> what a clown review. The fortune teller is explicitly called a fortune teller. Yeah. The master is explicitly called the yeah. master. And I think he's even Everyone else the, is self-explanatory. the owner of the factory, too. Yeah, I think so. Many times, yeah. And what else do you want to know? Farm hand. Guy who works on a farm. Yeah. It's a 17th, 18th century Bavaria, asshole. There's four jobs. And he's there are too many shots of landscapes. I would watch a whole two hours of just landscape shots. Those are beautiful landscape shots. Those are too. amazing. Yeah. But that also goes with his kind of filmic goal to get the uh, the kind of old German history, yeah. the old German art into the yeah. new stuff. So I mean, I don't think he got the historical reference stuff. This reviewer. There's a there's a movie on Netflix mm-hmm. called like uh, Moving Pictures or Moving Paintings. Okay. Or something like that, that I watch every now. Moving art. Okay. It's like uh, Planet Earth kind of stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, just like nature shots. That's sick. What? Just classical music. No dialogue. Oh, no yeah? narration. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah. That'd be good for a restaurant, I guess. 
That would be pretty neat for a restaurant. Yeah, right restaurant. Project, project <laughs> yeah. some landscape. Not bad. Uh, I went to a bad restaurant the other day. Well, the restaurant was good, but the fucking it was like there was like supposed to be Greek themed restaurant. Okay. And they're just showing like guys Google picture search of fucking Greek. Oh, here's a statue. Here's a fucking <laughs> Parthenon and like some nonsense. Ding ding ding. Music playing, yeah. dude. One of my uh, going. <laughs> one of my favorite restaurants downtown Montreal. Mm. It was like an Asian place. Mm. And it's just got these like pictures of like photography of like <laughs> some like stock image of an Old Asian watermark. model or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, dude. It's hilarious. It's so yeah. funny. Just the most generic stuff. You yeah. Can find. We need a Buddha skull in uh, the jungle. <laughs> we need a pagoda temple. <laughs> oh, here we go. This one's good. Mm. A collection of ugly Germans stare into space, <laughs> droning on philosophically in mundane voices. They're all profoundly unhappy about something, possibly glass. Apparently glass is important. Torturously tedious, hard to follow, and impossible to give a shit about. I like that review, though. <laughs> I like that review. A bunch of ugly Germans staring into space. Oh, he's not wrong. He's not, yeah, he's not wrong. He's not wrong couple that cuties in there, but for the most funny. part. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Were there any cuties in there? I mean, the master's son might be the cutest girl in the movie. The goose. The goose, <laughs> the goose was a cutie. <laughs> it's true. But I mean, what, this guy wants fucking smoke show babes in <laughs> 18th century Bavaria? I think this is closer to what it was like back then. A bunch of ugly fuckers. Staring into space. Staring into space. The most boring movie I've ever seen. A whole bunch of nothing happens while getting handed bullshit poetic gibberish. This is the reason that art house movies get mocked. Well, not really, though. I don't know. I mean, that's a taste thing, I guess, too. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, this then, is like the type of shit. Mm, this is the type of review yeah. literally any piece of actual poetry gets. Yeah. But, I mean, then you could just say, oh, well, then would your perfect movie then just be, like, a flicker? You know? One frame pictures just flying by 60 times a second, and you go, oh, that's a perfect movie. It's yeah. super fast. I wasn't bored because it was flickering right, yeah. in my face. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no actual analysis or no, yeah. intellectual uh, reason behind that. Most of the low ratings yeah. are, I didn't understand or it's boring. Yeah. Or... But, I mean, why would that result... Or why would that get it, give you a bad rating for something that you don't understand it? My, Wouldn't that be more interesting? Yeah. That you don't understand it? That you go, oh, I wonder what's going on here. My theory is that all of these people are stupid. I think you're right yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be it. I think that yeah. might be it. I think the... Uh, stupid landscapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an asshole. <laughs> the, the internet is populated with mm -hmm. just fucking dummies who think their opinion is worth anything. Yeah. As opposed to us. Yeah. Who are very smart individuals yes. and our opinions yeah. are worth everything. Well, we are very uh, smart. <laughs> I've said it once and I've said it before. Our opinions are the correct ones. Everything else is wrong. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I mean, you can't really argue with that. So. My, my opinion's wrong, buddy. <laughs> That's my opinion. The way your head explodes. <laughs> I think that was a Star Trek episode where they trick a robot into making an error and it has to kill itself. Good classic Star Trek episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called... What is it called? We are... I, Robot with Will Smith. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I am Robot with Will Smith. Um, some good ones? You wanna yeah, some five get stars. Up, get up some fivers. This one, this one is going to be interesting. It's signed by Jim Morrison. Wow. <laughs> posted so... two years ago. It must be real. <laughs> uh, posted last month. Holy fuck, he's back. He's back, The dude. next one is from Tupac, actually. <laughs> These are very interesting. Strange. Fertile correspondences the alchemists sensed in unlikely orders of being. Between men and planets, plants and gestures, words and weather. Film is nothing when not an illumination of this chain of being which makes a needle poised in flesh call up explosions in a foreign capital. <laughs> Man, that's Cin where art house <laughs> poetry fucking... <laughs> Cinema returns us to anima, religion of matter, which gives each thing its special divinity and sees gods in all things and beings. Cinema, heir of alchemy, last of an erotic science. Jim Morrison. Oh my god. Well, I guess that's Jim Morrison poetry, I guess. I've, uh, yeah, I guess. 
He was a film student too, Drew Morrison. Huh? Was he? I yeah, thought he was, was a leather pants student. That too, dude. <laughs> leather <laughs> pants <laughs> professor. <dude. laughs> but yeah, he went to school with uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Oh, really? He was in the same class as Coppola. Shit. All those guys. I think he might have known George Lucas and all that shit. Pretty cool. I didn't know that. Pretty cool, yeah. I mean, he was pretty theatrical. Yeah. Well, I think his movies were bad, or like they were too artsy, like, oh, okay. or just too, like, oh, a guy's running around on a roof or something. Yeah. And they booted him out, or like, boo, fuck off, kind of thing. And then he was like, oh, I'm going to write my own poetry. And Worked out? Like, yeah, I think it, uh, more profitable, probably. <clears throat> a dissection of the human mind, presented as a fable, yet could almost function as a kind of science fiction film in that it is a comment on how technology can go wrong and how easily we can doom ourselves as a human race if we depend on our technology too much. Fair enough review. Interesting review. Interesting, didn't yeah. didn't think of that before. No. I didn't think of that, and now that I am thinking about it... Makes sense. Not really. You don't find? Uh, no, I don't see it. Oh, no? No. Well, I mean, if you monopolize your, your one thing that you can do, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's I fucking... Uh, yeah. Well... Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, the the dissection of a human mind, that seemed pretentious to me. Uh, that's the word, the wording of it. Yeah. Presented as a fable. Yeah, it does it seem. It is a fable. Yeah, yeah. That makes yeah. sense. That one I, I'm, I'm on board with. Yeah. Uh, but the whole technology thing, uh, I don't know. Well, technology is pretty loose here, I guess. Technology, I mean, yeah. Glass. He just means yeah. glass blowing. Yeah. But they're not, they don't. A commodity is what he means. They're not the depending on the glass blowing they're depending on the recipe yeah yeah i don't know i don't know i wish you would have went more into detail that's interesting a, that's review, review. Though. yeah interesting any other good ones in there yeah looking looking for some that aren't too long aren't too <laughs> short. a lot of the the thing yeah Five star reviews are usually longer than the the half stars are always like shit dumb BS yeah and then the five star fucking reviews are like shit. every f- just fucking word salad of yeah, just random yeah. shit it's a dissection of the cross section of the intersection <laughs> of the like there's too many sections but <laughs> heart of glass is one of the most effectively thought provoking influentially deep rooted genuinely uncompromised poetically imaginative authentically gigantic and hypnotically mesmerizing work of art that its essence is too much ahead of its time a little pretentious but i mean i'm I on board very much so long enough sentence what was it 300 words in that <laughs> jesus christ i, I uh, get what he's saying but i mean come on you could say it once, not seven yeah. times in a row. <laughs> this is a guy trying to fill word count on yeah. an essay or something. He's stuck in his college mindset. Once again, Werner Herzog proves himself powerfully that he is one of the notably he that he one of the notably greatest German filmmakers in cinema history. Out of the fucking okay, never mind. <laughs> Where he opened and ended the film as stunningly gorgeous as what he made in uh the wrath of god how do you pronounce the first word agiri agiri that i think so there's an l in there what a l g u i r e e r e r r e i just misspelled it then yeah well, maybe yeah. he misspelled it yeah no that's what i mean yeah he just misspelled oh, it. oh okay yeah. it's a g u i r r e oh okay he just threw an l in there for fun i'm gonna double check but yeah. i'm pretty positive agiri yeah it's agiri the wrath of god al gary I don't think it's Al Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gary, two words, two first names. Yeah, it's A G U I R R E. Oh fuck this guy. Anyways, um, Agari, that wrath of yeah, God. Yeah, no L, bud. Come on. No. Anyways, uh, an in, in, in extraordinarily sentimental poeticism that evokes the viewer's passions and emotions jaw droppingly. Mm. The fascination of the film and the status of sensory here is imag- imagery, visionary, magical, and exquisitely marvelous in every sense, which carries one of the most incredibly charming metaphysical moments that needs to reach that needs to reaching beyond the human's mind level to give it its complete right fairly. Damn, what? Man. I don't know if we want to go back into that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, one thing I just remember, though, that's uh, interesting about Herzog, I don't know if we talked about it before, but be, he he's able to make these kind of more poetic or these very kind of personal movies because he funds them all himself. Like right, All okay. these are Herzog film production, like with a K and all that stuff. Yeah. 
they're all his own company makes all these movies. Okay. I don't know if that's just a fun fact to, to let the people yeah. know, but uh, so he'll direct like the shitty fucking mm-hmm. straight to TV mm-hmm. ones to yeah. get some cash and yeah. then he'll film this shit. I don't even know if he does it just for like. I think he might like just some crap stuff too. Oh yeah, Cause just like a guilty pleasure. Maybe I don't know because it's you can still go like it's half a Herzog film. Like it, it almost feels like someone trying to intimate or um, Imitate. impersonate him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, something like that. But yeah, he'll like raise the money himself, and I'm sure. Well, now Netflix pays him, so True. Netflix is doing good. Has he? Is he working on something? I think he's got something coming out. Yeah, I think he was going to do one every two years or something for Netflix. No, it's been two years already. Has it really? It's been way more, yeah. Wasn't it 2018 when the other one came out? What's the last one that came out? Inferno? That's like 2015, dude. Really? Or no, uh, Lo and Behold. Yeah. Lo and Behold. That came out after Into the Inferno? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought that came yeah. out. Into the Inferno is 2016. Okay. Lo and Behold. 2016, same year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Lo and Behold wasn't a Netflix original really it was on netflix but it wasn't produced for netflix yeah interesting because i think uh i listened to an interview with him on uh was it mark maron's podcast okay and uh i think he directly works for netflix now though interesting or i think he's produced by netflix now like all his stuff all his future projects or like the next five movies or something like he's got some deal with netflix okay where he's only working for them and all his stuff goes straight to Netflix kind of stuff. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm searching, I searched Herzog Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, nothing's popping up. Oh no. It's just next movie. It was on pause. Oh, he accepted a role in The Mandalorian. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well, that's, was that what we were talking about before? Yeah. There you go, dude. In order dude. to fund a film project. It all ties together, dude. Let me tell you, it all ties that's together. That's hilarious. That's pretty funny. Well, it all works out, dude. It all fucking works out. Seriously, eh? That's fucking funny. All right, Lee, what's your review of Werner Herzog's 1976 Heart of Glass? Herse aus Glass. Out of 10? Out of 10. I'm, I'm not going to give it a 10. Okay. I'm not going to. Because def- I definitely need a rewatch. Okay. But it's like a solid fucking nine for sure, at least. I agree. Nine on ten. Nine on ten. That's what I'm giving there it you go. as well. Nine on ten. Nine this, on ten. This thing is dreamlike, even more so than Felinus' Year Con. I think it's I think. way better, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's fucking, it's nuts. I don't even know how to describe it. It's too cool. Well, you gotta watch it. Yeah. This is the thing. You gotta watch it. Well... Is that the podcast? I guess so, <laughs> Give man. Give it a 9 out of 10. <laughs> uh, you should go watch that movie. It's fucking fun. I am Nick Hillam and Gillum77 on Instagram. I am Lee Byrne. Lee Byrne on Instagram. You'll figure it out. You can follow us at uh, Monolith Film Pod, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, email at uh, monolithfilmclub at gmail.com. Find us there. Find us on every single podcasting website you could think of. Uh, yeah. We're, uh, we're still taking submissions for uh, people reenacting their favorite scenes from the movies we talk about. Yeah. If you'd like to hypnotize you and your buddy and smack beer glasses on each other's heads, feel free. If you'd like to lie naked in between the two companies, if you're ass slapped, feel free. Send it in place. So we don't need to be able to lie to you.